Welcome back everybody. This is the second lecture for the urinary system and in this lecture we're going to be going over the structure and the function of the glomerulus. This video is sponsored by doc to doc the personal lending platform designed for doctors by doctors. Do you have some big expenses in the near future? Maybe you're moving, applying to residency or fellowship, fixing up your car or home, or starting a new practice. doc to doc believes that traditional lenders overestimate the risk of lending money to doctors, residents, and medical students, focusing too much on the challenges of their financial past and giving them insufficient credit for the promise of their financial future. Check out doc to docs personal loan options at doctodoclending.com slash da Vinci. So first an overview of just kind of the different terms that we're going to be mentioning a lot throughout this lecture. So first you have the glomerulus, and we've kind of mentioned this previously in the in the first lecture. This is a network of capillaries that's created by the afferent arterial, which we'll show here in this diagram. So this is afferent arterial, and then it's drained by the efferent arterial. So it goes in here and forms this complex network of capillaries that serves as part of the filtration apparatus for creating the filtrate which then goes on to become the urine, and then it's drained by the efferent arterial, which then goes on to form the paratubular capillaries. And like we say here, it's responsible for filtration, and then it's surrounded by a structure called Bowman's capsule, which is this kind of enclosed double epithelial layer like sac, if you will, that kind of surrounds this network of capillaries. So this entire thing is called Bowman's capsule. And it's a double epithelial layer, so you have a visceral layer here. Which actually serves as one of the barriers in the filtration apparatus. We'll talk about that in a few slides. And then you have the parietal layer here. that is then actually continuous with the rest of the nephron, which is here, this, is, this would be the proximal tubule here, which is one of the segments of the nephron that we'll talk about. And so this actually, this whole space in here, all throughout this lumen, is actually called Bowman space. So, just to follow everything through, so Blood comes in through the afferent arterial, it enters the glomerular capillaries where it is filtered through across the filtration apparatus into Bowman space, which is the beginning of the nephron, and then from Bowman space, travels into the proximal tubule and then so on as the re throughout the rest of the nephron. So the renal corpuscle is defined as the glomerulus plus Bowman's capsule. So it's this capillaries plus the surrounding Bowman's capsule. These can be found in three locations cortical area, the mid-cortical area, and the juxtamedullary area, which is essentially at the border of the cortex and the medulla. Then you have the actual nephron, which begins by definition at Bowman's capsule and then goes through the distal convoluted tubule, which is the last segment of the nephron. Then from here, you go into the collecting duct, and the collecting duct receives filtrate from multiple different nephrons. And then the collecting duct is responsible for essentially either concentrating or diluting the urine. And then from the collecting duct, is where you go into the minor calyx, which then goes into the major calyx and the renal pelvis and then the ureter and so on. So histologically, on a tissue section here, this is an H&E stain, and this is from a kidney. And the best way on a lab practical to, to identify if a tissue is from a kidney is to look for a renal corpuscle. This entire structure right here is the renal corpuscle. So in the in it can be hard to discern sometimes depending on the cut. You know, you're very rarely going to clearly see the afferent or the efferent arterial. What you see here is you'll see a lot of red blood cells like this and these are found within capillaries. So these are all glomerular capillaries where you find these like this and here and here. And then some of these supporting cells that you'll see around here, say for example, these cells or these cells here, these are what are called mesangial cells. We'll talk about these in a few slides. These are essentially kind of connective tissue support cells for the glomerular capillaries and Bowman's capsule. So those are kind of intertwined in here. And then you see this, this white space or clear space in here. This is the lumen. This is actually Bowman space. where you're going to be filtering the blood through and then you're gonna have the filtrate found in here. And then this outer layer here, this is the parietal layer. 
of Bowman's capsule. And then the visceral layer can be hard to identify because it's part of the filtration apparatus, so it's all intertwined in here with these capillaries. So sometimes we can see some cells from those and we'll point those out over the next few slides. So the parietal layer here, you can see kind of very clearly on the outside here. And then these other sections you see here, we'll go over these later in the lecture. These are different segments of the nephron, you know, because essentially it's a cut through. So you're cutting through a number of different nephrons. That's how you're seeing all these different cross sections here. This is another great section because again, here's the entire renal corpuscle. Here's the glomerular capillaries in here with the mesangial cells. Here's Bowman space here. Here's that parietal layer here. And then you can see where actually it's continuous with this region right here is proximal tubule. So it's a very nice view here of where you can see that Bowman space is directly continuous with it. Now the renal corpuscle from a functional standpoint, plasma is filtered through the renal corpuscle across three layers of the filtration apparatus. And then from there, the filtrate goes into Bowman space and then where it's clearly defined either as the ultrafiltrate or the filtrate. Those three layers are the endothelium, of the glomerular capillaries, the glomerular basement membrane, and then the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule, which is actually known as podocytes. And so this is just a simple diagram to illustrate those three layers, and we'll go through each of these layers over the next few slides. So first, the endothelium of the glomerular capillaries. These contain numerous fenestrations, and they don't have any diaphragms covering them to make it very easy for blood to essentially move through them and into the filtration apparatus here. So it's essentially kind of a first filter like this with a bunch of different holes in it and then there's also a number of pretty wide gaps between the different endothelial cells as well to really make it easy for fluid to make its way across. You also have a number of aquaporins which are essentially water channels to help the, the movement of water as well. You also have a glycocalyx which is found on the surface of the endothelium and this would be found in here just above this first segment of the basement membrane right here and again it's all across here, just kind of drawing it in in different segments to illustrate that. It's composed of negatively charged proteoglycans. And what's important about that is that it repels negatively charged molecules, such as proteins. And one thing you want to know is that proteins, say like albumin, which is found in the blood, but any protein, it, you do not want that really coming across at all. You, there's, in a healthy individual, there's no real movement of protein across the filtration because the proteins are just too big. They can't either they don't make it through the gaps between the endothelial cells or through the fenestrations, or they don't make it through this portion right here, or they get repelled by the glycocalyx. For a number of different reasons, protein doesn't make it through in a healthy individual. If you do a urine analysis, which is essentially where you just collect a patient's urine and look at it in the lab, if you see protein in the urine, that's a sign of kidney disease. And so that's often a sign of damage to the filtration apparatus, and that's a pathological finding. So it's not, so again, the filtration apparatus is designed to, to really keep proteins out. Electrolytes, glucose, those amino acids even, because those amino acids are smaller, those type of molecules, those do make its way through. And then as we'll talk about, get reabsorbed over the course of the nephron. So the glomerular basement membrane is a thick fused basal lamina that's formed from contributions from the basal lamina of the endothelium and of the podocypes, which is the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule, and we'll talk about that in a couple slides here. This is really the major barrier to the movement of molecules into the lumen of Bowman's capsule. And although the endothelium kind of serves as an initial filtration barrier and then the podocytes are kind of a last final barrier, the, ma the majority of the filtration occurs within the glomerular basement membrane. It's also what's important to know for histological sections is it's best visualized with a PAS stain. It's going to have a very kind of distinct, thick, pinkish type color to it. There's three layers of the glomerular basement membrane and we kind of labeled those down here in this diagram. So first you have the lamina rara interna and this is just beneath the endothelium and it has negatively charged molecules, which would include laminin, fibronectin, and then heparin sulfate. Then you have the lamina densa here, and this is essentially the fused portion. And it's essentially where you have the basal lamina from the podocytes fusing with the basal lamina of the endothelium. And I'll put this up here as well. 
and the major protein in this layer is the collagen type 4. And then lastly here you have the lamina rara externa. It's very similar to the interna, but it's deep to the podocytes and it has negatively charged proteins, specifically laminin, fibronectin, and then heparin sulfate. And you can see that here. So as we've pointed out, the glomerular basement membrane is a complex network of proteins and proteoglycans, which again includes collagen type 4, laminin, fibronectin, and heparin sulfate. There's other proteins and proteoglycans involved, but these are the real high yield ones you should remember. Molecules that are equal or to greater in, in size than albumin, which is 69 kilodaltons, cannot pass through. So albumin itself cannot pass through. I mentioned that previously. And then anything that's the same size or larger than that isn't going to pass through. And this can be a good number to remember. The other thing I'll point out is that there's negatively charged glycosoaminoglycans present in both the endothelial glycocalyx, which again is found in this portion right here. and the slit diaphragms, which are these portions right here between the podocytes. And these help to, bo in both cases, restrict the passage of negatively charged molecules. So the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule, this is composed of cells called podocytes. So these are cells with multiple cytoplasmic extensions. This kind of almost like an octopus shape. And they essentially wrap around glomerular capillaries. So if we draw a capillary like this, they kind of wrap around like this. It's almost like fingers around a pipe, if you will. And they also form several branching extensions called the foot processes. So they have these kind of foot processes like this that interdigitate like this, kind of like crossing your fingers together. You can see like this. And then again, like multiple processes, kind of like, you know, many branches of a tree trunk and so on. And so this, these cross sections here, these are those foot processes here. And so foot processes from multiple podocytes will interdigitate, like we said, but they don't completely obstruct flow. They'll interdigitate to the point where there's some open space here, as you can see between them. And these are called filtration slits. So this portion right here is a filtration slit. And then these slits are covered with a slit diaphragm. And so that's what these guys are right here. And then one protein to be aware of is nephrin, which is essentially a transmembrane protein found in the membrane of the podocyte foot processes. And this contributes to the structure of the slit diaphragm and then also contains negative charges that help repel proteins. And remember the slit diaphragm also have, like, have those glycosoaminoglycans that are negatively charged as well to help repel negatively charged proteins. So you can visualize some podocytes on a tissue section. And so you can see one here by this arrow here. You can see one here and then one here as we point out with the arrow. And one thing we point out is the nuclei of podocytes, they often bulge into the space between the glomeruli. And you can see that here where it's bulging into this space, this one's bulging into that space, and this one's bulging into that space here. And so that's a way you can tell. And they kind of have these round nuclei. And again, they're kind of on the surface here bulging in. And the reason why, you know, we draw them like this, or you see them like this, is you got to remember these are these are very thin slices. These are cut in very thin sections, and so it's only kind of one two-dimensional look at very complex three-dimensional structure. So the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule, this is composed of simple squamous epithelium that encloses Bowman's space. So again, this is Bowman's space here. This would be the visceral layer. This actually isn't the most accurate diagram because really it's in close proximity to these vessels serving as part of the filtration barrier. But again, I think it's just done this way to illustrate the point that there's two layer, two epithelial layers. And so then this would be the parietal layer. And you can actually see in this section here, here's a great, indicated by the arrow, here's a great example of the parietal layer. You can see where it's on the outer portion of Bowman's space here. And then it has this, you know, simple squamous appearance to it. And then what we'll note here is that it's continuous with the visceral, the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule at the vascular pole, which is this portion here, the vascular pole of the renal corpuscle. So this is, and you, the way you remember that is this is just where the afferent arterial is moving in. And then at this portion here, you have the urinary pole. 
where it's continuous with the simple cuboidal epithelium, as you can see here, of the proximal tubule at the urinary pole. So this is where you transition from Bowman's capsule into the proximal tubule. And then the mesangium. So this is an area of connected tissue enclosed by the glomerular basement membrane and provides support for glomerular capillaries. You have extra glomerular mesangial cells, which are essentially located outside of the glomerulus, so kind of in this region here, and they're found between the afferent and efferent arterial. Then you have intraglomerular mesangial cells, which we'll kind of just shade in here, kind of between, these are found between the capillaries here. And these are a special type of pericytes that provide support for the glomerular capillaries through the following functions. One, they can carry out phagocytosis of debris, so if something kind of gets broken up in here, as it goes through the filtration apparatus, these cells can then carry out phagocytosis of this cellular debris. They can provide structural support for the podocytes and the basement membrane. And then they can also secrete molecules in response to glomerular injury, including interleukin-1 or IL-1, PGE-2, platelet-derived growth factor, or PDGF. They also contain contractile properties that contribute to the regulation of glomerular blood flow. And so if you see in this section here, sometimes you can see them. You can get a good view, as you can see with the arrow here. You can see them here. You know, again, the capillaries are indicated by where these red blood cells are, but then you can see them here. They're kind of clustered like this, and they have this pinkish like cytoplasm here to them. You can see another collection of them here and here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel to check out more histology videos and other medical education videos.